So seeing as this is now the second video that I have filmed literally while sitting at the curb by my car over there uh, at the clinic, maybe we will call these segments uh, curbside with the doctor. But I wanna talk about a patient that I have and in the regen space and something that comes up a lot that, uh, that I, I think is really, really important to talk about. And it's this notion around um, treating pain generators and looking at uh, our outcomes on our procedures in order to guide our treatments. So uh, I have a gentleman, he is uh, uh, in, his, uh, in his 60s and he's been seeing another doctor for uh, injections for the low back. So patient has low back pain. Um, to give you a little bit of history, it is uh, worse bending forward. It is better in extension. So already I'm thinking that it's not the facet joints because remember the facet joints are generally gonna be worse when we go into extension, we go up and better when we flex forward based on the angle of the facet joints and the mechanics of what happens in the low back when we do that. So his was reverse, so it was better uh, with extension and worse with flexion. Um, and so already there, uh, you know, you could be thinking there might be uh, some clunial uh, neuropathy because uh, as the clunial nerves get stretched, uh, they could become painful. Um, you might have some discogenic pain, um, right? Because as you go into flexion, what happens is the, the posterior aspect of the disc has a little bit of strain put on it as the disc uh, space is opening up. Uh, and so it could be some mild discogenic pain. Um, those are kind of the two big things that, that I had thought about. Um, and then also, uh, sorry, third was uh, the uh, inflammation of the posterior uh, rami, so basically the dorsal root that is coming off of the spinal cord that basically gives off the branches that then innervate the rest of the back. So um, tying that story in, uh, that's what's going on with him. He was seeing another doc in town for prolotherapy, uh, or sorry, PRP of the low back. Um, and first off, uh, this doctor sold him three, right up front, three PRP procedures, right up front before ever seeing if even the first one uh, worked. So that's a problem with me, and that is not something I ever do in practice because of a few reasons. One, what if that patient is 100% better or near 100% better after one treatment? Now you're in a situation where um, you know, you've either got to refund them or what some doctors will do is they'll say, oh, well, let's do one additional more as, reass as, as insurance that this is going to stick. I, I'm sorry, if somebody after three months is 95% better, I don't think you need to do an additional injection as insurance that it's going to stay better. You just wait to see if it ever regresses and then you do it again. So that's, that's one of the issues. The other issue is that it... it what if the first one doesn't work? Then what are you going to do? Do a second? What if the second one doesn't work? Do a third? And now all of a sudden you've got three PRP procedures or whatever procedures that, that don't work. And so what, how are you going to rectify that, right? So, um, so this patient had had two out of three procedures with 0% relief. Zero. So he was in that ladder camp where... He would have just gone on, had his third, because sometimes what will happen in these situations is doctors will say, oh, sometimes we need to do three in order to see a change. No, that's BS. If you actually find the pain generator and you inject that pain generator, you don't have to inject it multiple times in order to see an initial response. The first time you inject it, you will, will see a response. It may be a small response, it may only be 10% improvement based on the severity of the injury uh, or uh, whatever tissue pathology is going on. But this whole concept of, oh, you have to inject something multiple times before you even see a response is complete BS. So, so he, he comes to us to, uh, to kind of get a second opinion on what's going on. We do the physical exam. I talk to him what I think about is going on, right? Kind of those three possibilities. Uh, some clunial entrapment, right? His superior middle clunial nerves were very, very large uh, on palpation. Um, and so we know that there's some inflammation going on in those nerves. Um, there's the disc, possible discogenic pain uh, and then the, uh, the neurogenic inflammation of the, uh, the medial cutaneous branch off the dorsal rami, which again supplies the skin over the back. And so we decide on our procedure, a single procedure, uh, we're going to do a caudal epidural 
uh, which I think will help uh, with the, uh, if there is any discogenic pain. Um, and we do use PRP for this. And then we did um, a nerve hydrodissection of the superior and middle colonial nerves, the superior colonial nerves, uh, basically in the region around the iliac crest where they are crossing over. And then on the middle colonial nerves, just lateral to the lateral edge of the sacrum where they are coming through and piercing that gluteal fascia. So we did those. Um, and then we did what's called an erector spinae plane hydrodissection, which basically um, we have the erector spinae muscles and then we have the transverse processes on the low back and we inject in the fascial plane between the erector spinae muscles and the, uh, the transverse processes um, of the uh, lumbar vertebra. And what we basically get is we get, we end up bathing the dorsal root ganglia at multiple levels on each side. So we do that procedure uh, on Friday um, and we spoke with the patient today. Today's Monday. Obviously, you guys won't be watching it on this date, most likely. Um, but basically, three days later, uh, our patient is 100% uh, pain free at this point. Um, he has zero pain, which uh, that might not last, right? Sometimes patients get a really strong anti inflammatory effect initially from our injections. Um, there was a mild amount of uh, local anesthetic in our nerve hydrodissections, um, but that would, if this response were only due to that. Um, his procedure was end of day Friday, so it would have been, it would have worn off uh, at the latest um, by uh, middle of the day Monday, or sorry, middle of the day Saturday, uh, and it is now end of day Monday. Um, and so we know that it's not just a, a local anesthetic effect. Um, so that it might wear off a little bit, but the fact that after one treatment. He has seen improvements when two other treatments with another doctor have seen zero treatments. It's a huge testament to the importance of a physical exam and trying to determine what's causing the pain and then actually trying to treat that pain. Um, it's, it's just, it, th this is the way that regenerative medicine has to be done. We have to move away from just treating all low back cases with peppering of the facet joints and the lamina um, and the uh, sacroiliac joint and the supporting ligaments and moving towards what structure is causing pain and what can we do about it to explicitly and specifically, sorry, specifically uh, treat that pain. So uh, just my curbside thoughts for the day. Uh, I hope everyone is having an amazing one today and uh, I hope you're all uh, on your way to becoming pain-free. See you later.